Today I'm going to be showing you how to restore this Hydro Flask. And although these techniques work great on this metal water bottle, I would say that these sanding and spray painting concepts are universally applicable. Before anything else, I recommend cleaning your workpiece. It'll make it easier to see what is and isn't complete later in the process. I also took a second to scrape off my sticker, nothing against Salesforce, it's just you can't really paint it if the sticker's there. If you're using an orbital sander, I would recommend the sandpaper sequence, 100 grit, 150, and then 240. If you don't have an orbital sander, your process is going to be a little bit different, but it's still possible. I'm using an orbital sander because I want to get down to the metal and take off pretty much all the paint. So if you're sanding this by hand, you can jump straight into 240 grit sandpaper. And instead of getting down to the bare metal like I'm doing right here, your goal is going to be to smoothen out the surface using that 240 grit sandpaper. And I know you won't be making direct contact with the metal surface, but paint does a pretty good job of adhering to paint as well. And the reason that using that 240 grit sandpaper is so important is because you're altering the texture of the existing paint so that the new paint can bond to it easily. Those who are using an orbital sander are basically doing the same thing, but instead they're going to make direct contact with the metal. Whether you're using an orbital sander or sanding by hand, you're still going to end at the 240 grit sandpaper. Prior to reaching the 240 grit sandpaper that's on screen right now, I went through the 100 and the 150 for a little while. Once I removed the paint with the first two grits, I knew it was time to smoothen it out with the 240. And you can tell exactly how smooth it is in this shot. But we're not done just yet. Even when using an orbital sander, we're still going to have to sand by hand. And that's honestly just because some areas are a little difficult to reach if we were using an orbital sander. You'll notice that I'm using the 240 grit sandpaper to smoothen out the painted portion of the bottle. Again, if you don't have an orbital sander, you're just going to apply the same logic and smoothen out the paint on the entire bottle. Once everything's smoothened out, you can start prepping the bottle for the new paint. I grabbed some masking tape and covered up the bottle's neck so that the paint wouldn't get where it didn't need to be. This can be a little tricky to manage, so I covered up the general area with masking tape and then cut off any part that I didn't want covered. And by the end, I had a pretty precise line. I also made sure to prep the area and now we were ready for paint. And for this project, I used Rust-Oleum's Universal Flat Soft Iron Metallic Paint. They do recommend shaking the can for at least 60 seconds, and of course, the warmer it is in the room, the better. And the technique here is very basic. Remember to move in light passes and at least six inches away from your project. You should also give your project various coats so that it has great protection. And you'll notice that after a while, it kind of starts to feel like a first person shooter video game. I usually give my projects three coats with about 20 minutes in between just to allow them to dry. And I would not recommend doing this next part, but it's something that I wanted to experiment with. I put a sticker on the bottle from one of my favorite channels on YouTube, and I wanted to see if I could clear coat over the sticker to basically make it part of the bottle. I don't think this is going to work well in the long run, so in your case, just be sure to put the sticker over the clear coat we're going to add. And as our protective layer, we're going to use Rust-Oleum's Satin Clear Enamel. Just like before, spray in light passes and give adequate drying time in between. Your final product's going to look something like this. Or at least it did, until I dropped it as it was drying. That's right, dropped it right before I finished. And since the paint and the clear coat were still a little wet, you can only imagine the damage. But hey, this means the bar is pretty low for you. As long as you don't drop your project, yours is going to look great. Now it's time for me to go cry for a little while. Thanks for watching.